Hello, hello, and welcome once again to our show called Things We Said Today. This is a Beatles program, a weekly show in which we talk about what's going on in the Beatle world newswise. I am Ken Michaels, host of the Beatles syndicated program, Every Little Thing, being joined by Steve Marinucci. Steve, hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And Steve is the writer of a lot of examiner columns on the Beatles, one on the Beatles, one on Paul, one on George, one on Ringo, and plenty of other examiner columns, too. And we're going to talk about Ringo Starr's most recent tour, which was his 12th tour with his all-star band, which recently wrapped up at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. And what I thought we'd talk about is not only just this tour, but how important these tours have become in Ringo's career now. And this is something that, I, I got to tell you, when I first heard in 1989 that Ringo was going to tour, I was really surprised. I didn't think it was going to happen. Well, I think, we, I think we were all kind of surprised because basically it started out kind of like a gimmick. I mean, it's, it's basically a glorified, uh, you know, oldies tour. or what? It, that's kind of the way it started out, you know, with Ringo leading all these, these names and in, in in 89 i mean he had a he had a he had a great band in 89 there's no question right and he had you know the if the word all-star you know had to be used that they were i mean he had joe walsh he had bill slofgren he had dr john he had billy preston he had rick danko he had levon helm well as ringo told, ringo has said many times that he was very insecure and he really wanted to pad the roster and he did. Yeah. I mean, he there's no there's no question. But I mean, a lot of those guys were guys he was really comfortable with too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no, and and it all just so happened that they all had happened to be fantastic players. Right. You know, so he started out with, you know, a great bunch of guys, and the concept just just I mean I think part of it had to do with seeing a Beatle on tour, but it also at that you know for that first band. It was such a stellar group of guys that you know it really it really took off and it it, it did very well and you know and even now if you look back on the video that came out of that tour, I mean they played wonderful they were they were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, anytime I watch a video of that, I'm amazed at that lineup. <laughs> There's so many great musicians all together on the same the same stage. Right. It's like watching the concert for Bangladesh in a way. Right. It's a similar. I mean, it's, it's a it's a spectacular, spectacular group of guys, and they were, they they were just. You really couldn't have started off, um, an idea with a with a better lineup. I mean, that was just that was superb. Right, but I think that he's kept up with it really well, and every time he tours, he has a great lineup, and he always makes sure that there's some change between the last tour. It's never the same lineup of, mu of musicians two tours in a row. There's always some adjustment that's made to keep it interesting so that if you've been to the previous tour and you go to the new one, there's going to be some difference. So I think it keeps it interesting that way. But I think that one of the reasons why this has become so important to Ringo is, and I think the beauty of Ringo and the change in his career since he came out of rehab is that he knows who he is. He's comfortable with who he is. He has said that he's a musician. A very simple statement like that. I think he got bogged down a bit too much with not only recording music but having an acting career. And once he focused on just being a musician, making records and touring, I think he's enjoyed it so much more. And the thing is that and I've said this on numerous occasions, with the exception of the Ringo album from 1973, I really think that the best music that Ringo has put out in the studio has been the music of the last 20 years, from time takes time on. That's just my own personal opinion. But those albums haven't sold squat. <laughs> and it's a shame, because they're really strong efforts on Ringo's part. So I think that for Ringo to remain vital, for him to remain someone that still matters, he has to go out there. And, and I it, think he really it, misses performing. I think he missed it at that point, and it came along at the right time with the right kind of offer. And do you notice that those uh, the studio albums that you mentioned have kind of taken on an all-star band kind of flavor where he's used, not totally, but he's used a lot of, you know, some, some of the musicians from his all-star bands 
and they've been, you know, and, and uh, he's, I mean, he's used, uh, in actu- actually in putting together the last two albums, he basically kind of, you know, grabbed people and said, you know, are you interested, you know, do you want to play? And that's, you know, um, and it's worked out very well. Um, I thought... Well, not only that, but even if you go back to the very beginning, he was using people that had already been on his own albums. Mm-hmm. He was using Dr. John. He was using guys from the band. Right. Like Rick Danko and Levon Helm. He was right. using those people. And Peter Frampton was on a dose of rock and roll. You know, it's, mm-hmm. these are people that were friends of his, too, that had helped him out on his own albums. Mm-hmm. And in some cases, like Ringo has played on, on Peter Frampton's music, too. Right. So, you know, it's a combination of both. I know what you're saying. In, in recent years, he's had people like Edgar Winter, Gary Wright, you know, those people, Richard Page. They've been on uh, his solo albums. And I think some of those guys are, in the in the context of the band, have worked out extremely well. I think Edgar Winter was fanta- was absolutely incredible. Mm-hmm. He was absolutely incredible. The one, of course, that really comes to mind, and I think who has really been missed, even though they've done a a decent job, they've had a you know a fairly good uh, last couple of all star bands. The one who everybody remembers and loved was Sheila E. She was. Amazing. Mm-hmm. She was absolutely amazing. And she's a dynamic performer. There's no she's, question about it. Yes, yes. But and, but and another thing that I love about these tours is that you know he, they've he's had different drummers with different styles altogether, going from Levon Helm to Simon Kirk to to Sheila E to Greg Bissonette. Also, Jim Keltner was in there and Zach, but you know they're all very different style drummers there, and it's an interesting thing to watch. Ringo drum with them and how he handles them because there are plenty of times when he keeps a steady beat and lets someone like Sheila E really flourish and there are times when when Ringo does some fancy stuff on the drums if you really pay attention right but right. you know so, the, yeah it, I mean it's 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 really good for him that he's able to you know to to keep his um to play that way and to and to be himself because I mean that's you know, as as you say, I mean that's what he is. That's hmm. what he likes to be. Well, so I'm, he, I'm you know, I'm glad it's worked out for him. He so likes well. to talk about how, in the early part of his career, he would play live with uh, Rory Storm, Eddie Clayton, those people. Right. So he has very fond memories of performing live. So I think he really did miss it, and this is the perfect opportunity for him to shine as both a performer, and someone up front singing lead. And not only that, the beauty of going to any of these shows is not only to to watch Ringo and, and to hear him do his classic material and, and very often his newer material, but you get to hear him drum behind songs that you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't get to see him do anywhere else. Right. I mean, where else is he going to play drums on Evil Ways? <laughs> a song like that or a song from Toto. Mm-hmm. Like Africa or something I, like that, or or I bang the drum all day, you know. I remember when he uh, when I saw him when Gary Brooker was with him, he was so thrilled to be able to introduce Gary Brooker singing, to to play Wider Shade of Pale with Gary Brooker. Hmm. Um, uh, that was you know that's one thing right there, and and um, you know I mean there there are, there are little examples you can come up with all the way through the the different lineups. Right. And then you can tell that Ringo's really enjoying drumming for other people. He really loves doing that. So he gets to do that. He gets to be a showman up front. And, you know, it's not just going there to see Ringo do his own songs. And I'm sure that Ringo enjoys doing other people's material just as much as his own. It would be interesting to see... Mark Rivera told me when I interviewed him um, at the beginning of the tour that there are... um, there are people that are asking to get on the tour, that are requesting on the tour that don't get on, and it'd be nice, it'd be fun to find out just who is not on, who didn't make it, you know, and and uh, to see the process firsthand, yeah, you know, see it in detail, to see how they come up with who they're who they're going to use. Um, I know that um, I asked. Um, there was a lot of internet talk. Um, suggesting that Mickey Dolenz would be fantastic, and and I still think he would be. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I asked him, and I said, you know, does that, how does that idea sit with you? And he said, 
I would absolutely love it. He and Ringo were old friends from, you know, from the old, from their old days. And, right. um, and he, um, he said, you know, I mean, he was a, uh, Mickey Dolenz is a, an old friend of uh, Harry Nelson's for one, of course, with who Ringo was very close to. And, uh, so they would have, uh, he would have loved to have done it. And I would, and I think the, the spark from that would have been incredible. Would have been just amazing. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that you can you can see that would fit really well with this kind of a concept. But what I also appreciate is how, and I know that a lot of people have the image of Ringo as a 60s or a 70s guy or both, but I do like when he updates the all-star lineups and he brings in people that were very popular in the 80s, like a Sheila E., like a Howard Jones, for example, or someone like Roger Hodgson. I mean, that particular tour with Roger is probably my favorite. Really? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, when you look on paper at the lineup of, of that particular tour, I mean, you have Roger Hodgson and Ian Hunter and Howard Jones and Sheila E. and Greg Lake. Greg Lake. I mean, what a wide assortment right there. You might think, this is so eclectic. This might not work. And it was beautiful. Yeah. No, so, I, I, remember, I remember thinking that they had really taken kind of a uh, an interesting direction in that um, using Ian Hunter and using Howard Jones and 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 Greg Lake and Hodgson that was uh, kind of amazing. And it made me wonder if, as the years go on, is he going to move into the '90s? You know, but um, but that was a very interesting tour. I really enjoyed it a lot. I'm a big vocal guy. I like great vocals, and you know, Roger Hodgson's an amazing singer. So I was really pleased with that and you know love the whole lineup to go from in the court of the crimson king <laughs> to something like the glamorous life i mean you're talking about such variety there so, mm -hmm. you know it's such a big difference in musical styles and i thought it worked extremely well and that's the beauty of these all-star bands you might not think that this lineup makes sense but then you watch it and it does and one of one of the interesting points in the all-star band's favor is even when you don't think the band is going to be that good it turns out to be better than you think it will be hmm. and that was really true not so much with this recent version but with the last version with um wally palmer and uh, rick derringer and edgar winter and gary wright and richard page they were absolutely stunning that that was one of the better lineups that i have seen and um, because uh, maybe it's c because I didn't see it until later in the tour, but they were all playing. And even I mean, it seems like you know as they go on into the tour, they get a little more focused with each other, and they get used to each other, and they get a little looser, hmm. and they start really kind of letting go, um, like any studio group would, you know, that had been playing together. And that's probably one of the beauties of the, anybody that sees the tour late as opposed to seeing it early. Yeah. Because they get, they get to see that. And so that's probably something that he really likes, too. And um, I'll be uh, be, inter be interesting to see if he does what he did last time around and takes this version, the 12th version, uh, maybe to South America or to Europe or somewhere like he did um, with the 11th version, which he took, you know, quite a few places. Right. Well, I'll tell you, I've appreciated every single one of these bands. Mm -hmm. um, what I appreciate more with the last lineup is that I've noticed that when he has a shorter lineup, when he has less musicians, that gives each musician more room to breathe and more room to play and experiment and shine more on their instruments. When you have less people, like in this particular case, you had Steve Lukather there, and he's considered a guitar god by a lot of people. He's not a household name like Eric Clapton is, but he's a great guitar player. Yes. You've got somebody like that. It reminded me, to some degree, of when Peter Frampton was in the lineup. Right. And in that particular lineup, there were less musicians. When you have less musicians, each one of them gets to do one more song. <laughs> you know, if you look back to the first few tours, there were so many musicians, they each got two songs. Right. Whereas in this uh, current lineup, the last lineup, everyone got three. Although, for many tours up until recently, there were solo numbers that were put in the middle, which were 
favorite moments for me in these tours. I love those particular moments when one mm-hmm. musician would be up there on stage alone just doing a song by himself. Right. I really love that particular moment, which has been removed now. I don't know why that decision was made. But, um, you know, when, when you have a lineup like the current one, you've got Steve Lukather who can really jam like there's no tomorrow. You've got Greg Raleigh, who's a great keyboard player. Todd Rungren is a fantastic musician all around with all of his instruments, really, that he plays. I mean, and uh, you got Richard Page, who's a great bass player and a great singer. So it's a bit more focused and not as busy as if you would and have a bigger lineup. So let's I'm not, not forget Mark Rivera who Oh yeah. is really who really is, you know, I mean, he's just fan, he's just fantastic. He's a great he's a great addition. So is Greg Bissonette, but uh, so, but Rivera especially is just so good and they are really you know, I'm, it's great that he has been with them as long as he has. Well, yeah. First of all, Greg Bissonette is a rock-solid drummer who works extremely well with Ringo, really complements him well. Right. And Mark Rivera is a multi-instrumentalist who can play just about anything. And what I was really impressed with during this tour was when Steve Lukather had to sing some of the Toto songs and Mark Rivera handled the high vocals. Mm-hmm. So it just goes to show. And Mark has a new album coming out. So yes, it would be interesting to hear... What that sounds like, and his vocals on that too. The he um, gave me a copy of the of one of the songs from the album um, after I interviewed him, and um, it's the song. I, I, he um, it's very it's complete it's a complete surprise. He sings incredibly well. He's a great vocalist, and the the song is really a, a rock and song. Mm. So, and you know, uh, whatever you're expect if you're expecting kind of a uh, a Billy Joel kind of a thing. Nope. Uh, Mark Rivera is a rocker. He is a real rocker, and I think the album will surprise a lot of people. I haven't heard the whole album, but I mean, on the basis of the one song, he, it's going to surprise a lot of people. Okay. But overall, I've just been so thrilled with these all-star band tours in general, and I think the the most important thing about it is that it makes Ringo happy, and it makes him relevant still. Because yeah. even though he's putting out some of the best material of his career... Radio has refused to play it. So the only way that he can actually see actual proof that there's a demand for him is to go out there and, and do it live. And I really think he's having a ball doing this because I think in the case of Ringo and Paul, they're only doing what they want to do mm-hmm. right now. And just knowing that, just knowing that Ringo is 72 years old right now and he still cares enough about his fans to go out there and do anything, whether it's perform live or make a new album, I'm grateful just for that. But and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, at the end of the show, I saw. I don't know, I don't know if it was at the end of the show you saw, but during with a little help from my friends, he was sitting there doing jumping jacks. And oh, I he, mean, he was doing them hard. <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing that for a long time now. He oh, does okay. it at the end of his of his shows. But he, yeah, I mean, he was, and he he actually this this year when he started going on Twitter, he started showing pictures of himself on the treadmill and everything uh-huh. like that. You know. He's no Ringo is Ringo is uh, is doing it. I mean he's he's keep he's keeping up and uh, and uh, and it's actually in the you know in the course of the way he's uh, his life has gone and the way he was hmm. you know he deserves he deserves so much credit for for you know being the way he is now and being so healthy and and being able to to keep going and um, we are all you know we're very lucky for that. Yeah, for sure. he's really turned his life around. So this has been another edition of Things We Said Today. I'm Ken Michaels, being joined by Steve Marinucci. People want to get in touch with you. They can do so by going where? They can uh, go to on examiner.com and search for my name, uh, or uh, check me out on Facebook. Um, my, I'm on Facebook under under my name, or I'm also on Twitter under my name. Uh, uh, send me a note, and I'll be glad to reply. And anyone that wants to look into my radio program, which is called Every Little Thing, they can do so by going to my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. And I also have a page on Facebook. You can friend me right there, and I'll be more than happy. Tell me that you listen to this show or Every Little Thing. be very happy to friend you. So thanks so much for listening to Things We Said Today, and we'll see you next time.